you know, there is a... Um, we talked earlier about the maroon myth and um, my own feelings. I find that I have to, in this space, keep ensuring and making statements <laughs> regarding myself before I make comments on certain issues, you know? And the maroon issue is no different that I find that I have to keep making statements about myself uh, and my own bloodline before I make certain statements. But the rhetorical question as to where in Africa did the maroons come from is not only a pseudo conundrum, but it is disingenuous and it is outright shameful. It is outright shameful that a country such as ours, Jamaica, claiming nearly 60 years of independence, has chosen to hang on to a colonial curriculum to keep its black majority population in the dark and divided at the same time. So you might ask, what am I talking about? But this is exactly what the Europeans, the British in particular, concocted to carry out their signature implosive modus operandi to divide and to rule. Maybe the fog of fear of the pandemic and the national periodical detention has created the ideal setting in which we must sit and reflect and introspect and finally face the truth of who we really are as a people and what we have become. So it will soon become clear to us why maroons are eulogized in the curriculum and why Africans are absent from the curriculum. And we call it a curriculum of exclusion, which, like the colonial constitution, does not have our best interests at heart. That keeps us plugged into the colonial matrix of enduring conquest, of domination, of control, of serfdom and buffoonery as we mimic their pomp and their pageantry. So for the records, let us be clear. We're here to venerate our loyal and noble ancestors, not to disgrace them, not to disrespect them. So we must speak truth and we must act on truth with truth. Said this many times in the space and I'll say it again. No maroons came out of Africa. And so no maroons arrived in Jamaica. And it's easy to Google the word and find out the word maroon recorded in 1666 in English, taken from the French maroon, which translates to runaway black slave or American English Spanish cimarron, meaning wild runaway slave or the beast who cannot be tamed or living on the mountaintops. To be clear... Africans arrived in Jamaica. Those who came before Columbus those who, and those who were enslaved by Europeans and forcibly brought here and those who came with Columbus. Africans struggled for freedom on the continent, struggled for freedom across the Atlantic, struggled for freedom on the islands and the plantations. We were never Maroons, we were always Africans. Many enslaved Africans escaped to the mountains and difficult access areas where we organized to return and free Africans who remained enslaved. And some of us were here before Columbus. Some of us were Wanda Sarah's um, Africans. Do you understand what I'm saying? Not Wanda Bolas, but Wanda Sarah's. So the moniker, the nickname, the derogatory nickname, that the white devils gave to us, our ancestors, while we were trying to free each other and while we did free each other, was maroon. Given to the inaccessible assets by the Europeans. So over time, the true freedom fighters liberated many fellow Africans. So the Europeans brokered a deal with the non-committed faction of escaped Africans to mitigate against their loss of property. 
And that deal they brokered with people like Kojo. And I tell you that Kojo was a traitor. Nani walked from Portland to Akompong to beg Kojo not to sign that treaty, not to betray the Africans on the island, and he signed anyway. It was this disloyal faction of betrayers with whom the You're British the signed their treaties, and that Please faction like, has clung onto the moniker right. of Maroons. So even though my own descendants, my own ascendants, call themselves Kojo Maroons, not understanding, we in this age of Aquarius, which is the age of enlightenment, understand ourselves as Africans and forgive our parents. So the true freedom fighters like Wanda Sarah's, like Nani, like Jack Song, like Chief Tachi, like Bookman, like Sam Sharp, like Bogle, like Garvey, like Rodney, and so many unknown to us. And until today, there are those of us who did not and will not give up on our African identity. We will not take on the moniker, the nickname of Maroons. And we burn the treaty, even if it is in our dreams, even if it is in our sleep, even if it is in our minds. So this glaring disparity in a multi-ethnic state where European, Chinese, Indian ethnicities are acknowledged, and rightly so, the greater majority of African ethnicity remain excluded from the curriculum and obscured in the monikers of Maroons and ordinary Jamaicans. Let us use this period of lockdowns to open up our minds. It's the age of Aquarius. It's the age of enlightenment. Let us use the time space provided to rediscover our true African selves. For only then can we avert self-destruction as in the cases of a malfunctioning immune system. To which we are neither party nor privy. Whether we're privy council or otherwise. <laughs> or privy to the queen or otherwise. So the latest enterprise has used the same tried and tested and proven MO, labeling vaxxers and anti vaxxers as Africans. As long as we continue to deny our primary identity as Africans, we are at a great risk of destroying ourselves under the false umbrella of the oppressor's monikers. It is time to awake from our sleep. Once again, we said no maroons came here. <laughs> Freedom fighters all, no maroons came here. But we know the betrayers, and we say burn the treaty. We're going to come here and read the entire treaty for you at a later date. And this same treaty that so-called, there are some people in Jamaica hanging on to and saying that the treaty this and the treaty that and the treaty that. It is this very same treaty that they used to kill Sam Sharp and the, so -called, the people who are here in, on the island calling themselves Maroons. They must apologize on behalf of those who were in their midst who betrayed people like Baba Sam Sharp, who put down every single resistance in Jamaica, like Paul Bogle in St. Thomas, and the thousands that they killed there. Do you think that we have forgotten our spirit? Remember, and our spirit is as angry as it ever has been. Three Finger Jack, Jackman Song. Chief Tachi. All of these great re um, resistance to, 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 to enslavement that rose up and that were led by freedom fighters in Jamaica were to a large extent put down by the people who are identifying themselves as Maroons. The war continues even in this time. And if we don't face the fact that we're all Africans and stop the damn foolishness about, you know, we're hanging on to a treaty, a colonial treaty that pit us against each other in the first place. 
that if we do not come together as Africans and understand ourselves as Africans, then the war continues. I am here on behalf of my ancestors. Mission is a heartbeat of the ancestor and purpose is life. And this is where mission meets life. So I stand in the space of my ancestor, Baba Sam Sharp. I burn the treaty. I stand in the space of my ancestor, Baba Paul Bogle. I burn the treaty. I stand in the space of my ancestor, Chief Tachi. I burn the treaty. I stand in the space of Jack Song. I burn the treaty. We have much more to say about the treaty. But time is not allowing that right now.